Well, true, he's, he's been trying to get me to get my own own uh, channel. He going. needs his own channel, don't Sorry, he? You, get in the comments down below. Right, guys, it's player interview time again. We have got the Super Eagles, Capitan, the main man himself, William Truce Ekong. Yes, sir. Soon to have his own YouTube channel, by the way, because this guy's a friggin' legend. Right, William, talk to me. Okay, so I was looking at your career stats yeah. earlier today, yeah? You've basically done an absolute tour of Europe, yeah? Yeah. You've been all over the shop, haven't you? Give us the countries where you've been and where you've played. All right, so I started at Spurs in the academy, um, and then I uh, left. So, like, from what, till, till 18? I, no, I left when I was 19, I was gonna get turning 20, so I got released. Uh, yeah, I was in the under 23s at the time, that was a, or under 21s even, I don't know. Who's manager at the time? Uh, we had Tim Sherwood, yeah. Les Ferdinand, and Chris Ramsey. Nice. Um, yeah, and then I got released. Uh, and then my first team manager at the time, I think, was Via Sporos. Okay. Yeah. So I trained the first team a couple of times, but I just I wasn't ready. I wasn't uh, wasn't good enough at the time. Um, and then I got released. I went back to Holland because I was playing uh, for the Dutch national teams, like the youth teams. At the time. Uh, yeah, like the youth set. Yeah, there, so yeah. I was like, under 17s, under 19s, under 20s. No, not under 17s, under 19s, under 20s. Um, so I kind of had some credit there for me to go back to Holland and try and play first team football. Um, and I went to, uh, yeah, to Holland for a year and a half. Um, and then I signed to Ghent in Belgium, um, who just became the champions of Belgium. Right. Um, and I just played like my first season as like a regular starter in the, the Dutch. So that's region. basically like the start of your career? That was the start of my career, yeah. So it was, it was quite funny because I came back and I, I already felt quite frustrated because I was turning 20 that summer and hadn't played any appearances yeah. yet. Um, and I remember my debut for FC Groningen at the time. Um, SE who? Groningen. Gro that's the G, isn't it? Yeah, it's the G. <laughs> <It's> the, <G. laughs> the accent's incredible. Groningen. Groningen. <laughs> so uh, it was actually big. Virgil left there. Yeah. And I got his number when he left. So he went to uh, Celtic at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I made my debut and, and I got subbed at half time. Oh, I, no. Yeah, it was really bad. It was really bad. I didn't play too bad, but we were just hanging on. At centre back? Yeah, centre oh. back. And then the uh, gaffer wanted to play three at the back and he subbed me off and I just felt like I, I wanted to cry. I think I cried probably that evening. Um, then I went alone to a different team in the second division in Holland, uh, FC Dordrecht. Yeah, they sound that word. And uh, we got promoted with them, so that was like massive for me because it was like a whole excitement of being a part of a winning team. Part of team. a team again, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. And then I stayed there for another season and I did well. We got absolutely hammered by everyone because we, yeah, it was a small team and I didn't really have the budget to uh -huh. do well. But we had a lot of young players like me who like came from big teams or were on loan or, or just trying to find their feet. And um, yeah, that was like the start of my career. Uh, and we played like one against one over the whole pitch. So like some games, I was literally just out man marking defending. somebody. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. So I learned a lot. But if you see, there's probably going to be a lot of bloopers from that time as well. Because if I lost my man, it will be. It don't matter, mate. That's the beauty of like when you're younger and you go out on loan and stuff like that. Is to blood yourself. It's to get yourself out yeah. there making mistakes so that yeah. when you get a bit older, you learn from that experience, don't you? I think honestly, guys, I think for any young footballers out there. If you can go out on loan, go out on loan. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible, isn't it? It's the best thing. It's the, the only thing, thing that matters. Yeah, that's the best thing. And I feel like now when I talk to some of the boys even here, I always say to them, like, the biggest things are, the most things I learned was in those first years. And I say, until you're maybe like 25, you should just try and go and play wherever you can. Yeah, make and, mistakes, boom. And I think that was like the key thing for me. I just knew that I had to get experience, especially in my position. Like, nobody wants a center half that's not experienced. Yeah, so sure. you just need to try and get those appearances in. And, and whatever level you're already at at that time, um, so yeah, that's what happened. So I spent a, a season like losing almost everything. We got relegated, but because I spent so much time uh, playing and I did quite well, so the champions of Belgium picked me up. So they they just saw my like raw qualities Which was and liked it. it was Ghent. At Ghent, the time. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I wasn't ready yet because they were going to play Champions League. So they just you know took a punt and then they stuck me on loan to a team in Norway called F FK Haugesund. Yeah. And uh, the good thing there is I had the English manager, Mark Dempsey, yeah. who was an academy coach at Manchester United for a long time. So when I was at Spurs in the academy, he knew me already. So he just said, listen, if you come here, I'll make you important. You can be my skipper. That's and nice for you, though, because yeah, you know you've got somebody in your corner straight yeah. away as well. And I feel like that level of playing in Scandinavia was that like, perfect for me, because I feel sometimes when you go down the leagues in, in the country where they have like a strong league, for example, in England, or you can get lost because the type yeah, of football sure. might not necessarily be suitable or be as good for you. 
Um, and then I just, yeah, then I just wanted to fly it and then I just started playing really well and was consistent. I, I was 21 and I was or 22 and I was captain of a team. It was an like, amazing experience. And um, uh, yeah, then I went to the Olympics, uh, which was like a massive thing for me at the time. Didn't you score a last minute goal in something? No, that was in the AFCON, that was a couple of years later. That was big though, yeah? Yeah, that was, that was quite big. And I played together at a table and he scored four goals in the first game. Damn. It was unbelievable. So yeah, it was like, it was exciting to be part of something. And like, I feel like for me, for my national team journey, that was massive as well, because that's the Olympics under 23 team, obviously. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and as you see now on the TV, everyone wants to see like the exciting I know, players. It's wicked, so it's like, it? if you do well there, it kind of puts you in the picture Yeah, again. sure, sure, sure. And um, yeah, then after that, I, I uh, went back to Belgium for a bit, played there. Um, and then I got a move to Turkey. Uh, You've been to Turkey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has been everywhere, guys. Oh my god. I went to a team called Bursa Sport. I don't know. Bursa like, Sport, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah sure, they've got yeah. like the, the Crocodile Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, to be honest, at the time it was like it was a very good offer financially. And, and I just felt, I felt like I might not get a chance at this again. So I thought, okay, instead of me you know, trying to stay in Belgium and trying to force my way up, if I get a chance to obviously secure some kind of life for myself. Bloody right as well. It's go got to do it, it yeah. Um, and people question that decision as well. And another side of it is I knew that I was going to play a lot of football because they kind of brought me in because it was the year before the World Cup. And they knew we got qualified for the World Cup and I was going to play a lot. They wanted to sell me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was like a win-win for everyone. Um, as long as I just stayed fit and just like pushed myself. And um, yeah, I did that. Um, then we went to the World Cup and then played all those games there, which was yeah, World amazing. Cup, good experience, yeah? Yeah, it was great, it was great. Um, and I felt like I was a little bit more ready then, and because I, I learned quite a lot playing, you know, regular men's football at the time. I was 24, um, and then I got the move to Udinese. So that was, uh, yeah, that was great. Now to Italy. That. Yeah, to Italy. Wow. So you know what's, what's this like? Can I, so, uh, like, for somebody who's always just lived in yeah. England, and I've always just played in England. What's it like when you know you have to move to a different country? Is it daunting? Are you, are you like? proper apprehensive about it or do you just at that age where you're still young you're still kind of like you just have to do it and you just deal with it you know what it was for me is that um i, I was kind of kind of prepared for it anyway because I, I i for example i came to england when i was 12 to go to a boarding school so for me being away from home was like second nature so i, I found it exciting really and for me it was that like every time i got a chance to like move up maybe not necessarily Okay, financials are one thing, but but so trying to climb up the leagues and yeah, play against sure, better players, sure, sure, sure. test myself against better players, that was massive for me. Because so I so moving to Italy is almost like it was my next it, step. It's, again. The, it's kind of you're getting there now. Yeah, you're I'm getting, getting there. you're getting higher and higher, aren't you? Yeah, and it kind of was like the, the satisfaction was that my plan of you know going to all these countries and like going to Turkey when people were like, oh, why are you going now? You can like kill your career. It was all like coming together. So it was just. Yeah, that was, the, that was the beauty of it. And then now, if, okay, I'm in the Serie A, I'm 24. But, um, you know, they've given me a long deal. You know, I've done well and I'm coming in there as a player, who's an international player. So they're going to take me seriously and I'm here to play. And then I think I, I signed there and I think the second day after I arrived and I, I started the first game of the season. And then, uh, yeah, I never looked back really. And uh, yeah, Serie A was amazing for me because I was like finally in like a top league, playing against top players. Top players. And I really loved it. Like I just. So like, how long did you spend at Udinese? So I was there for two seasons. So I, my first season was like breakthrough. I think that really put me on a map. People started Europe. to take yeah, note, okay, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 Will's here. Um, then renew my contract, and I thought, okay, I'm going to stay for a long while. But the first conversation I had with Gino is when he called me after the World Cup. I was like, listen, you know, we also own Watford, and to be honest, we also want to bring you here, yeah, but yeah. it needs to be the right timing. Um, and that's actually how the whole like, what for move came about. And um, yeah, when obviously like, when two years ago when the, you guys got relegated, it was quite sad because I kind of knew that was probably going to come. Going to be coming, yeah. but you'd rather us be in the Premier League, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah, and then so then it was like, okay, you know, if you're going to make this move, like, how do you see that? And I, I just thought, okay, this is like another one of those challenges. I've been doing this all my career. Like, Boom. why not? Let's go again. Let's go again. So I just said, okay, I'm more than happy to come. You know, just talk me through the team, and then I had a long conversation with, uh, yeah, with the owner obviously, and he said, yeah, these guys are staying. This is going to happen. This and this and this and this. And if you want to be part of this like project, come because like this is the time for it. And I thought, you know what, you know, I've got nothing to lose. And because I've been travelling around Europe, and by this time, you know, I've dragged my missus around for five years. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? University. It takes its toll that as well. I've got two kids now, yeah. so I was like, okay, I wanted to come back to England anyway. So and settle. It just seemed like the perfect fit, also in my private life. And um, yeah, and I thought, you know what, let's go for it. Let's go for this challenge. And like, you know, I believe in it. And then, uh, yeah, that's also why it like, meant so much for me last year when we got promoted. And, you know, during the season, we had these conversations about like, guys, like, come on, let's get it. Let's do it. Because yeah. I knew like 
for me, this is like the chance that I've Massive, been waiting yeah. for so long. So it's a dream always been to get back to the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, that was it. That was it. It's nice. Yeah. So that's like that's the beauty of it. It's like because I when I was 19, 20, and I was part of like Spurs in a new training ground and like tasting and smelling all of it. You know, being with the first team, it's like you're so close. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, yeah. You know that okay, this is like the holy grail, and it. So yeah, you spend yeah, all yeah. those years working to get back there. And then, yeah, you know, you need a little bit of luck along the way, but I think the main thing for me was also I just wanted to improve myself, like improve myself, improve myself. So, improve so myself. you left, so you left Spurs at what, 19, 20? Yeah. And then it took you how many years to get back, basically, back uh, to the big leagues, back to the Premier League? I mean, yeah. So, see, if I if I said Serie A was like a big league, then it took me five seasons, and five every years, season, yeah. like step up, step, step up, up, step up, step up, get a move, get a move, get a yeah. move. And then, yeah, now I'm 20, I was 26 when I came back here, turned 27, so it took me six, seven years, really, to get back. That's what I mean. I think people think sometimes think it's just sort of, it just happens. No, it just happens. No, yeah. don't. No, it's it taken you five or six years yeah, of yeah. absolute graft and dedication yeah. and every day sort of going through it and learning and making mistakes and all that kind of stuff. It's just how it goes. That's the process, isn't it? Yeah, that's But as long as you think and believe in your head, Yeah. Boom, you've got a chance, haven't you? Yeah, and I, and I feel like everyone has their level and, this, and, and you know, I'm, I wouldn't take it any other way now for me getting here because even like the mental steps I've made and how I've developed as like a player and being able to handle challenges, like if this would have happened to me earlier, I wouldn't have been ready for it. Yeah. So then I almost feel like, you know, it, it was meant to be this way because if I would have had my first game at Spurs, maybe at, who says 21, 22, if I would have had a setback then, I yeah. wouldn't be able to deal with it. That would have just like crushed me completely. So I feel like all those things and all those mistakes I made, red Happen cards, for a reason. goals, you know, having stinkers, having new managers that don't fancy me, like I needed all of that yeah, to get me nice. to like be Kind of mould you. Yeah. Everything that's happened has moulded yeah. you into what you are now yeah. so that you are good to go. So you know if yeah. you make a mistake, you can deal with it. Yeah, it's yeah, a setback yeah. for sure, yeah. but you can deal with it. Yeah. You, it's happened before, boom. It's happened before. And I feel like that's the real thing that people, when you see someone who I feel like is confident and is like really, you can see that they like they play with conviction, it's because there's nothing is new for them anymore, yeah. you know what I mean? So all the situations that you're in, like any cross, anything you've done that a million times. I've seen like, it before. Yeah, you've dropped the ball, you've had an unbelievable save, so it's like you know you can do it. And yeah. I feel like that's the feeling that you really need to really be able to get to a point where you can express yourself and be like, just go for it, you know? That's what I always try and say to the young goalies, but I'll always say, like it's great when it's going well and yeah. it's obviously not great when it's going against you and kind of stuff but you have to try and stay in that line there yeah. you always have to try and stay steady all the way yeah. through because you know that if you get too carried away you can take your eye off the ball if you get too down you ain't going to be confident you ain't going to be coming for stuff yeah. you have to just try and find that line but it takes time doesn't it it takes time it takes years it takes time and and it and it's like i feel like it's like an exploring journey because you don't really know the things that that you know that give you that stability because there's things that will trigger you and now it's easier to read those things so for example in a, in a game if i make a mistake which happens every game yeah. you just kind of learn how to deal with that like how do i not get caught away in that or if, if we, the team is playing a certain way how can i still try and affect things or even off the pitch like you know for last year we were in a, in a difficult situation like how can we actually effectively like change something here without you know, just throwing my toys at the pram and things like that. Bloody so right. it's, yeah, it's good to just like have that experience. I feel like you can't buy that stuff, and and um, yeah, it kind of just prepares you. Not even in the football world, but for any career in life, really, you just need to go out and do the things to do it. You know, William, I love it. What a guy. He's well, is honestly, he's like a captain without being the captain. Nah, you are, nah, mate. Nah. Well, he's the captain of the Super Eagles. That's why, because he's the man. Honestly, he's a friggin' man. Right, let's take it back to the Premier League. Okay, yeah. we've got some questions. All right, before we actually get into the Premier League, highlight of your career so far. Uh, World Cup. World yeah, Cup, yeah? The World Cup, yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, Some crazy. sort of achievement, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Low moment of your career, the lowest moment. Oof, I've had a fair few of those. Um, probably, I said, playing in Turkey, I remember playing in a full stadium against Galatasaray, um, and I got sent off after 20 minutes oh. uh, for a red card, and I think we got hammered 6-1. And I just felt low because I just felt like I let my team down, and it yeah. wasn't even that I did anything on purpose. But you just felt like you, yeah, you, you, you let, let your mates down. down. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was probably my my lowest moment. Yeah. Nice, geez, love it. Right, biggest influence in your career? Um, John McDermott. So he's the was the academy manager at Spurs, and I think he's head of the 
his technical director at FA now, so I saw him on TV actually the Euros behind the bench. So, um, but he was the first person who really believed in me because I was quite late to join the academy setup at 16. And I remember that he came to my school and sort of set everything out and had some family problems because my dad didn't want me to play football. So, and he really went like above and beyond to like try and get me going. And um, yeah, I think without him, then I wouldn't have been sitting here today. So he's Decent. definitely the man, yeah. Um, favorite manager you've ever played under? That's a good question. It might have to be Cisco Disco, you know? <laughs> Disco Cisco, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I feel like I've, I've enjoyed playing with, under yeah. him and working with him. You know, there's also been times that he's put me on the bench, so it's not even about playing and stuff like that, but I feel like he's taken the time really to help me and uh, like we watch a lot of video clips and like really trying to progress me yeah, as a player yeah. and I love that. He's a good guy, isn't he? And he's a good guy. And I feel like yeah. sometimes I, I like working with people that are like straight shooters, so just tell me if you just like Just tell me what like. it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm with that. you, I agree, yeah. I totally agree, actually, yeah. Uh, Favourite player as a kid? Thierry Henry, that was my beautiful, wasn't uh, That was my, my my childhood idol. Yeah, I loved it. I um I did an interview yesterday, guys. I was asked to pick between Thierry Henry and Wayne Rooney, and I said I'm not sure because yeah. they are both different players. I, I said if I That's want somebody, cool. if I have to have somebody on my team who I'm going to rely on week in week out, I pick Rooney yeah. because he's an animal, he's a sicko, and he's a winner, and he drags people up the pitch and he drags the team to win games. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's a tough choice, though. It's a tough choice. I think if you wanted to just see like some beautiful oh, stuff, then it's silky. Probably, yeah, I know. Ah, oh, Thierry, what a player! What a player. Um, best player you've ever played against. Oh, there's a few as well. I don't want to name drop, but I'd probably say uh, Messi at the World Cup. That yeah. was that like, special. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because I was just impressed of how much influence you could have um, in like the key moments. Yeah. That was um, the big fun. But and, and obviously playing in, in Serie A, we played against Juventus a few times with Ronaldo. Nice. He scored a fair few goals against me as well, so I'm gonna have to, <laughs> have to mention it as well because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. So it was that was amazing as well. So obviously I don't know what he was like when he was playing at United Animal. in your time, but. Now it was just the sharpness yeah. and just like the reading of the game was like different level. Different yeah. level. Messi and Ronaldo guys, not bad. I think that's probably the best two we've yeah, so I mean, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say this. <laughs> oh, good. Right, next season, the player you're looking forward to playing against the most. Ooh, that's hard as well. Who are you looking forward to pitting your wits against next season? It's, I mean, obviously it's going to be striker. Um, I think this might come back to haunt me because I'm going to say something good. Um, Harry Kane probably. Nice. Yeah, I think that's it. What's he going to be in the Man City or the Tottenham shirt? I think he's going to be playing for City. Do you? Yeah, that's going to be my shot. There we go, guys. Yeah, Will, so. Will choose to Kong's giving it away already. He's playing for City next I season. So. Mate, so. if they sign Grealish and Harry Kane, yeah, that's a mean, problem. I mean, I want to play against them, but it's not going to be nice. It's not. It? You can't enjoy that, yeah, can it's you? It's not going to be nice. But you know, we might just do something. I reckon. Sod it, mate. You got to. You got to try. You got to give it your best. Right, um, mate. That was incredible. Honestly, okay, that was absolutely world class. Guys, yeah. Will Truce to Kong, like I say, he's the captain without being a captain. <laughs> You're the main man, Geese. No, Give me cheers, that. Mate. Love it, absolute Geese. pleasure. Foscast. Will Truce to Kong. He's been trying to get me to get my own, own uh, channel. He going. needs his own channel, don't Sorry, he? Get in the comments down below. Get there. Tell I might, him. I might actually pinch the GoPro, and next time I go to the international duty, I might take it with me. In with the, Nigeria? Yeah. Uh, listen, to all the African fans out there, who wants to see the Super Eagles captain, Will Trooster Kong, do his own YouTube vlogs? I want to see that. You want to see that, don't you? You are going to have to do that, Geez. I'll lend you it, okay? Deal? Love that. Love it, mate. Will Trooster Kong, start. Yeah.